Hello and hi. I hope everything is fine. We deal with n particles today. Not the first time and certainly not the last time. So what we first do is we create a sphere which will emit particles. And uh, we go to the sphere history and raise the subdivisions just a little bit to get more detail here because uh, every point on this sphere will emit particles. So we go to FX, I'm already there, and here we have n particles and we create a particle emitter from that object, emit from object, and we leave the default settings as they are, and um, because here we can change everything now, uh, instead of omnidirectional, uh, we just use a surface which gives us a little bit less of uh, particles here. We don't need that many down here. So this is a particle emitter. Now let's select the particles here for example and um, we need to make them a little bit more beautiful. First of all we go down to shading and under shading we exchange points which can't be rendered in Arnold to spheres. So they are more blobby, wider, so to say. If the radius is okay, we're fine with it. Otherwise, we go up here and here is the particle size and you can raise the radius or lower it down. So uh, this is the part one in shading. We'll go further down to color. Uh, the particles are white and I want them to become more dark when they get old. That's why I create another thing here in that ramp. And uh, here I go to a dark red, like this. And I let the whole aging process begin with a quite nice yellow, quite bright color. So this is how the uh, ramp will work on the age of our particle system. Now we need to change the color input from constant, it's con constantly red now, to the age. Now you see they're yellow when they s get started in the world and they get darker and darker the older they get. So that's uh, raining particles now. We go to view and we create a camera from that view. That just creates a new camera which looks through the scene from the exact perspective view as we've done before. It's called Perspective 1 and this camera sits here in the outliner. Now let's select the particle and with the control key the perspective camera and we go to end particles and goal. What happens? The camera is a goal for the particles. We'll change a few things now. We go back to particles where we just did the color thing and go up to lifespan because we don't want them to live forever. We give them a random range of a lifespan of 10 and a lifespan random of 2 and a general seed. I don't know if that is necessary of 1. So this is the different animation now we have and now we go to the goal weights. Where are they? Let's click here and close all these things and here we have goal weights and objects. And we currently have a goal smoothness of three. A perspective is our, the perspective camera is our goal and the goal weight is set to one half which means it's pretty interested in reaching that. The particles are pretty interested in reaching that goal. If we lower that, the animation looks quite differently because they fall to the ground and they're kind of undecided whether they should actually go to the camera and uh, while they're undecided they're dead anyway because we gave uh, them a random but limited uh, lifespan. Let's increase the time slider a little bit and the goal weight. I raise it now you see the particles come to the camera. 
and you actually see that the goal weight is so intense that the particles shoot and come back to the camera. So we can change the goal smoothness now, which will be, uh, change the behavior quite drastically. Raise the weight again. Now I delete the camera, that means I'm deleting the goal as well, so the particles are falling down. And I think the grid is quite nice now. I introduce a letter, the letter A. And um, we need geometry here at the front and at the back for what we're going to do now. So we go to geometry. We go to deformation type and just activate the deformable type. So this creates triangles here. Now the A sits here and we want to make the A a goal. So end particle, sorry, end particle is selected and the type mesh, it's the A. And we go to end particles and goal. So what do the particles do? They go to the A. They go to every little dot of the A and of course it's nicer to move the A a little bit apart from the sphere which emits the particles so uh, we see a proper animation where they get close to the A. Now we create a second letter and guess what? A B and we move the B over here and maybe we rotate it a little bit and we go to geometry and deformation type and we activate that as well. So this is going to be our second goal. So n particle and the mesh number two which is the B and n particles and goal. So what do the particles do now? They're undecided. And what we'll finally do now is we'll animate the goal weight. And you do this by selecting the particles and right here in the goal weights and object section you have now two objects. Actually you could change the weights per particle uh, but we want the whole group of particles to act in this manner 0 0.5 for both of them that means they are both of the same importance so let's type in here we animate just just animate this with an expression very very simple equals absolute because we no, need values which are positive uh, goal weight uh, minus one doesn't make sense absolute round bracket sign bracket again time bracket closed, bracket closed, enter. So this is the first expression we have. So we change the goal weight for the second letter too now. So equals absolute and cosine of time and we close the two round brackets. Now we can actually hide the, the the geometry, all of the geometry. Actually, we can we could hide it here in the outliner, or we just deactivate the uh, polygons right here, so we see only particles. What we could use now is more particles. We go up to the emitter right here because the emitter tells us how many particles are being emitted and raise this number to 1000. Now of course the simulation gets much slower but much more detailed. And with this I leave you alone. Have a nice rest of the day or night and bye-bye.